Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 savage put downs on live TV. You don't get to stop being a villain for two seconds, and now, now you're a hero. <laughs> oh, dear. That is a big one. I haven't, uh, that is a big one. No. For this list, we'll be looking at the funniest insults anyone has ever unleashed on live TV. Tell us which moment you think is the harshest in the comments below. <laughs> Number 10 Craig Revel Horwood insults Anton. Strictly come dancing. Holy baby. Craig may be notorious for his sharp critiques as a judge on Strictly Come Dancing, but his harshest moment was actually accidental. After an Austin Powers-inspired dance, Craig said that he had been distracted by Anton de Beck's fake teeth, only for Tess Daly to frantically correct him and clarify that they were Anton's real teeth. They're all his own teeth, just clarified that. My teeth! <laughs> <laughs> The judging panel was in hysterics as Craig tried to apologize to poor Anton, and the usually impeccably professional Tess was close to tears. I'm sorry. <laughs> it just goes to show, sometimes an insult about your dodgy footwork isn't the worst thing you can hear from a Strictly judge. Number 9. Where the presenter accidentally insults Rick Astley to his face. BBC News. There's nothing worse than accidentally talking trash about someone while they're right there. But to be fair to the BBC's weatherman, Matt Taylor, nobody sees Rick Astley coming. Live on BBC News, Matt was asked what he thought about Rick Astley, and admitted he wasn't into the 80s pop star. Uh, Matt, are you a Rick Astley fan? Uh, not a massive one. But <gasps> that was a oh, that was the wrong thing to say. Around. He's listening. Well, humiliatingly, it was then revealed that Rick would be on the news programme next and that he was currently waiting on a video call. He's That's listening brilliant. in. Look, he heard everything you said, man. The damage is done. Luckily, Rick saw the funny side of things, but we can be sure that Matt won't slag anyone else off live on air anytime soon. Number 8 John Burko tells Michael Gove. House of Commons. Burko might not be the Speaker of the House anymore, but his time in Parliament will be remembered for the way he used to bellow order or the ways he would keep members of Parliament in line. Order. Order. After one argument over Brexit, the Speaker told Michael Gove off in a particularly condescending tirade that when he turns up at our children's school as a parent, He's a very well-behaved fellow. Birko mentioned that Gove was usually well-behaved when dropping his kids off at school, and he wouldn't dare behave like that in front of the headmaster. Spare us the theatrics! Behave yourself! Be a good boy, young man! Number 7. Anne insults beauty therapist contestant. The weakest link. And I've branched out into Air Force. <laughs> Anne Robinson was known for her wit and sharp put-downs on The Weakest Link, but some of the show's guests over the years got a particularly harsh reception. When Anne found out that contestant Marilyn was a beauty therapist, she immediately quipped, You've not got round to working on yourself. Marilyn was a great sport and played along with a brutal roleplay here, where Anne pretended that she was a client at her salon, called Marilyn and described herself as, my name's Marilyn, and I'm a bit lumpy and ugly. <laughs> what can you do to counsel me? It's no wonder that Anne got a reputation as the Ice Queen of television quizzes. Number 6. Adele Gets Cut Off. The Brit Awards 2012. Without a doubt, Adele. Yeah! 21. After winning Best Album of the Year for her Masterpiece 21, Adele should have been able to take a moment to bask in her glory. Thank you so much. After telling the crowd how proud she was, however, the singer was rudely interrupted mid-speech by James Corden, who was presenter that year. The show had apparently run out of time since the band Blue was scheduled to play at the end of the night. I'm so sorry. And I can't believe I'm about to cut, cut off. Me off. I'm so sorry. Can I just say then, goodbye, and I'll see you next time round, yeah? Adele, who can always be relied on for a blunt reply, gave the middle finger to the Brits as the room was filled with booing. Later, ITV formally apologised to Adele. Number 5. Graham Norton hilariously shuts down Alison Hammond's dog question. This morning. Alison Hammond has been a national treasure on this morning for years, 
but the presenter's first regular Friday slot turned awkward recently when she talked about Graham Norton's dog. Do you know what? I miss you. I love you. Explaining that she would be getting a new four-legged friend herself soon, she asked after Graham's pet who she had met the last time she'd seen the TV personality out and about. The last time I saw you, you was with your dog out and about. I've just been told I'm going to get a four-legged friend. Have you still got your dog? Uh, no, uh, dead. Graham waved away her apologies, explaining he wasn't able to resist. It might have been awkward, but at least we can always rely on Alison for a priceless moment. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm absolutely devastated. <laughs> Number four, Matt Baker asks David Cameron. The One Show. The One Show isn't known for its incisive political reporting, but Matt Baker shocked the nation when he unexpectedly gave the Prime Minister a brutal question at the end of a friendly interview. That is a big one. I haven't, uh, that is a big one. After thanking David Cameron for coming on the show, Baker kept smiling as he asked, Just very quickly, how on earth do you sleep at night? His co-host, Alex Jones, was visibly shocked by the unplanned interrogation. Cameron gave a vague answer about the importance of a good night's sleep and how being exhausted leads to bad decision making, probably questioning his own decision to come on the show. Because at the end of the day, if you're exhausted, you'll make rotten decisions. Number three, James Acaster swears at Lorraine, the last leg. Do you know, what? I really think you should take over from David Attenborough. <laughs> <laughs> the last leg has provided the nation with quite a few controversial moments, but nobody has ever received a put down on the show as savage as morning TV presenter Lorraine Kelly did. After Lorraine revealed Piers Morgan was her hero of the year, Comedian James Acaster was quick to shut her down. Let's go, Heroes of the Year, Lorraine. I think, stay with me on this one. Piers Morgan? Go f yourself. <laughs> <laughs> the host exploded into laughter as Lorraine tried to explain her case, telling James that she understood and appreciated his sentiment. You no, don't to stop being a villain for two seconds and now, now you're a hero. <laughs> Number two, Peter Kay meets Liam Gallagher. The Brit Awards. It's Mr. Noddy Holder! The Gallagher brothers don't have their rowdy reputations for no reason, and they continue to make headlines even years after their glory days. At the 2010 Brit Awards, Liam Gallagher held the live broadcast hostage when he accepted the award for Best Album of the Last 30 Years, giving a speech where he thanked every member of Oasis except his brother Noel. The best fans in the world live forever the musician then threw his microphone into the audience and gave his award to a fan in the crowd before swaggering off when the cameras cut back to the stage presenter peter k commented with the perfect comedic timing what a knobhead before we begin we publish new content every day so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos Number one, Jeremy Paxman asks an MP. BBC Newsnight. Well, yes. why isn't it appropriate? You're here, you're coming here to defend a change of policy, and you can't even tell me when you were told what the change of policy was. Jeremy Paxman is known for terrifying politicians with his vicious interrogations, but his Newsnight interview with junior MP Chloe Smith was particularly savage. During a discussion about fuel tax, she refused to tell him about the ins and outs of the issue. So is this some sort of joke? Plan. I mean, how can you possibly have as a number one priority cutting the deficit when you choose to spend and underspend in funding a tax cut or failure to implement a tax rise which was scheduled? After exposing the Tory politicians' past comments on the subject and asking how they justified their spending, he ended the interview by giving her the harsh question, Do you ever think you're incompetent? It's hard to watch, but at the same time, someone's got to hold MPs accountable, and no one's better at delivering a savage put-down than Jeremy Paxman. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and subscribe for more great content.